Hello everyone and welcome to the 170th episode of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast recorded on Monday, January 17th, 2022, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah, enjoying it so far. On the podcast today, we have a man with such a ridiculously high football IQ that he is going to explain to us why that Bengals touchdown that happened after the play was whistled dead by refs was allowed to count. Ryan Holtz. Ryan, why is the NFL great and we are small brain Neanderthals? I, I fucking... Hello, everyone. Uh, I called that shit out before literally anyone was talking shit Real about time. it. Like, I was just like, literally the minute it happened, I went straight into our group chat. And I don't know if anyone was even watching the game at yeah, the time. Yeah, I was. Okay, fair. And I was just like, they they clearly blew a whistle. Mm-hmm. On, the, on the live broadcast, like, as the ball was leaving Joe Burrow's hand, you could hear a whistle... And, like, look, sometimes audio mixes are wrong, like, with the broadcast. Like, it might be slightly ahead of, or, like, certain microphones on the field might be ahead of others. They're not perfectly in sync. Yeah. It's live. You know, like, there's there's margin of error. The ball was only in the air for, like, maybe a second before it got to the receiver's hand. So, like, when the whistle was blown while it was in the air really affects the play. It does look like the defender gives up. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. did the defender give up because he heard a whistle or did the defender give up because... The guy was like a few yards away and there was little chance for him to make up the ground. Right. And then when they showed the replay, when they started actually finally talking about the controversy, and I know that Terry McAuliffe, the the NBC um, like ref guy who talks about ref stuff, mm-hmm. was probably clamoring, like, yeah. I need to talk about this. They just fucked up big, big, big time. Mm-hmm. Um, when they showed the remixed replay, like just as the ball was about to hit the receiver's hands is when the whistle blew. So it made it look like, uh, you know, technically the rule says that the play shouldn't count. But like, eh, did it really affect the play? And I don't know. It's probably somewhere in between there uh, was when the whistle actually blew in real time. Here, here's Until we would get on like it. an on-field mm-hmm. camera view that has a mounted microphone that is synced to video. Right. I don't, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean... So I was watching it live and I mean, yeah, there's, there's no way to tell really like how synced up to the millisecond the audio is, but I wrongly thought as Joe Burrow was throwing that pass, cause he was running towards the right sideline yeah. and kind well, of fell out of bounds. Out. I thought he threw the ball as he was stepping out of bounds and then the whistle went off while the ball was in the air. So I thought they were blowing the call dead because he stepped out of bounds. That's right. what they were yeah. pu- blowing. Yeah. No, exactly. It was not like an inadvertent whistle. They Yeah, it is. The, That's what an inadvertent the, whistle is. The line was. judge... Well, I know. But, I mean, he incorrectly thought that Joe Burrow stepped out of bounds. Right. But refs get shit like that wrong all the time. Mm-hmm. If Joe Burrow is stepping out of bounds and the whistle blows, the def- I don't think there's anything surprising with the defender kind of giving up the way that he looked like he did. Who knows right. how close the, the whistle was to the, the ball being caught. I still think it would have almost certainly been a touchdown, even if, you know, if the whistle was not blown and the defender was still trying to go for it. But refs get shit the wrong rules. and blow the right. whistle, blow the play dead all the time when they shouldn't have. It doesn't matter. The play is dead. Yeah, yeah it, it was bullshit. There's, there's some rule, and like, yeah, it would have been the refs fucking over the Bengals, probably, mm-hmm. instead mm-hmm. of the refs fucking over the Raiders. Like, it was a bad call, and but that that is what most inadvertent whistles are, is it's when the ref thinks the play is dead, blows it dead, everyone stops when they shouldn't have. Yeah, and right. that's why they've started, like, any time, even if the ref thinks that it wasn't a fumble and thinks that he was down, they'll just let it play out and then sort it. And then, like, after the play, he'll go to his buddy and be like, no, we're going to say that it was down by contact, but we let the play run. So if it is, like, overturned and it was a fumble, then we have a play mm-hmm. that happened afterwards. Mm-hmm. So refs are basically at this point trained to just let shit slide and they'll get it right after yeah. the fact. They, which is because they should how not you have get blown it the whistle. Because it would no, have been a touchdown. It would have been reviewed clearly. anyway. So if he had stepped out of bounds, they could have just said, touchdown called back, he stepped out of bounds. Which... Well, he definitely blew the whistle before the touchdown yeah. was scored, no matter what. No, no, he didn't I... and... Well, what's the NFL saying? <laughs> no, the NFL saying that they got it right. Like, no, no, that they exactly. Made the yeah, correct like, call in letting the touchdown stand. 
Right. But that the but 100% the whistle came in before a touchdown was scored. And like Andrew said, it was the line judge. You can see the reason it came in as late as it did was because he was like fumbling for his whistle because it wasn't in his mouth for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like he did blow the whistle before he knew that a touchdown was going to be scored. 100%. Yeah. Um, I get it. And yeah, like the issue with this rule, like I remember there was one a couple years back that I defended where it was kind of like spirit of the rules versus letter of the rules mm-hmm. where a Texans player in the playoffs... Uh, caught a kickoff in the end zone and just like started walking and nonchalantly tried to hand it to the referee and like never kneeled or anything like that. And then the Chiefs ran down and recovered it in the end zone. By the letter of the rule, that's a touchdown for the Chiefs. Like, but like spirit of the rules, like the guy was giving himself up. He wasn't trying to play football yeah. anymore. Mm-hmm. We can just say, fuck it, it's a touchback. This one, when someone blows the whistle, yeah. play has to stop. Like, that's a player safety issue, 100%. Mm -hmm. Like, if people continue to play after the whistle's blown because they don't know whether or not the refs are just going to, like, say, nah, never mind, like, that whistle doesn't count, that's that's important shit. And that's one that I think, yeah, you have to just say, sorry, Bengals, we fucked you over. Take another crack at it. Like, it's a redo down. It happens every game. Like, bad plays happen every game on both sides of the ball. Like, it's just... And, yeah, it's the playoffs, and it would have been a touchdown, and it would have been really shitty yeah but no 100 yeah. it would have been it would have been a bad call mm-hmm. but it would have been the right call in this situation for them to i was i was incensed i was getting ready for the announcement because i was like haha an inadvertent whistle i know this rule and then the referee came up and he just like the ruling on the field is a touchdown and i was just like whoa God. no that's not correct that's not what it should be the way like, he delivered shit. that you could tell he just wanted as little time in the spotlight as possible <laughs> and um Sorry, what I was alluding to before was that the NFL is, of course, being the NFL and that whole nuanced conversation we just had about why this might be a little weird, where there could possibly be issues, why what we witnessed in the game might not match the timing of events in the actual game itself. The NFL isn't doing any of that right now. They're just saying, uh, yeah, that was the right call. Or if really pressed on it, like, oh, yeah, that whistle was the whistle for a touchdown. Don't worry about it. Like, it, (laughs) yeah. Ah, the shield. Mm. They're great. Also on the podcast today, we have a man who's about to make his case for why he has better time management skills than Mike McCarthy, Andrew Clark. Man. I'm getting all my ref shit out of the way. <laughs> yeah. So I got I got an article linked for the other, but we can, ooh, we can do it. Right okay, here. I don't I don't know if we're going to I, I don't know what your take on it is or not. I am so firm in my understanding of what was going on there that I, I don't think I'm going to be shaken. But McCarthy and Dak, after the game, what they said during their press conferences mm-hmm. was the weakest shit I've ever <laughs> fucking seen. That was, was such, was, such bullshit. It was They're like, bad. Um, it was the ref's fault. Uh, like, no, you can't just... Bought the ball yourself, Dak Prescott. You can't just say the ball goes here, not give the ball to the ref, not let the ref touch the ball and make sure it's in the right spot. It's it's such horseshit. Mike McCarthy's yeah. time management skills, obviously garbage. Dak Prescott, if you want to run there, it's a I think it's a bad move. But look, if you think that's your best shot of like getting within actual range of a touchdown, fine. You have to go down earlier. <laughs> you have to go down mm-hmm. earlier and you have to make sure the ref gets the ball. You can't just keep fucking going as long as you can and then slide before you get hit like it's a regular ass play and there's not eight seconds left on the clock. And then just spot the ball yourself and then <laughs> block the ref from getting to the ball and get mad when he hits you and then spike the ball after the clock has run out. It's such horseshit. That the Cowboys yeah. are blaming the refs on this. No, the the refs did not fuck up in that situation. No, it's it's great to watch. The minute that Dak Prescott takes off, the umpire starts running. No, yeah. like the the umpire who's trying the really ball hard that's a is, great get, is hauling ass. Mm-hmm. Like that he he didn't owe them anything. He doesn't owe them to do that. But he knew immediately, mm-hmm. intrinsically. I gotta get there. The reason now. he barreled like, over Dak Prescott getting to the line is because he's like, I need to get this ball touched right fucking now. Yeah. He and the spot was garbage. Did you see? Yeah. Dak started sliding at like the twenty-seven. Yeah. And then uh Dak and Biotish 
which ironically, Viadash is in the middle of this too, yeah. and he's a Wisconsin guy. So mm-hmm. we all are like, ah, shit. Uh, they spotted it at like the 23. Like they gave themselves like an extra four yards. And the ref like started to he kind of back like them up. like half a foot back. Yeah. And then was just like, ah, I, like, look, we got to Like, we got whatever, guys. We'll give you a shot. Like, the flag football mantra mm-hmm. of like, ah, fuck it. Like, what's, what's the difference is four yards going to make? And like, yeah, gave him the best possible chance. And no, 100%. Dak, if he's going to... When, when you look on it, like, apparently other coaches have chimed in who, like, went out. They're just, like, on a run play, on, like, a QB run, I've seen it done with 16 seconds. Yeah. I've seen you, like, run the ball, slide, come up, hand the ball to the referee, get it spotted, spiked within 16 seconds. They only had 14. So, like, basically that play call is absolute trash. Like, there's there is a what 70 percent chance that time just expires instead of just taking two hail marys mm-hmm. like i i don't think that your your odd your percent odds of scoring a touchdown from four from the 40 versus the 25 is worth the almost three quarters chance that you just lose like instantaneously no it's absolute bullshit um I don't, you, I don't know if you saw this part of the press conference, Andrew, but I thought Dax was particularly the weakest shit I've ever seen. Oh, because of the fans throwing the, shit? The fans. Yeah. The, the reporters asked him about what he thought about fans throwing shit on the field, and he basically went on to this rant for like a minute long of going like, oh, yeah, you know, like, it's really disappointing. Like, you know, the fans, they don't they don't see the, the stuff, the effort that we put in behind the scenes. Like, we're working at this yeah, 24-7. Like it's a travesty. And like, it's disrespectful. I know it's supposed to be, you know, it's fans short for fanatic. Like, you know, we got to... But at the same time, I, I would hope that they'd have respect for the team and more, you know, we, we put ourselves on the line out there. And then they said that they, they were throwing it at the fan, at the at the refs. And Dak was like, oh, well, good for them then. <laughs> like, just yeah, like, I just... Let's throw shit at the refs. Yeah, that's good. Like, hey, man, you, I fucked up really good. bad. You should try to hurt the referee. <laughs> right. And then the and then the reporters all started laughing, like thinking that he's joking. And like, he didn't fucking smile at all. So then later in the press conference, someone asked him like a follow-up and let him, gave him a chance to walk it back and said like, so like, do, what do you think about like them throwing at the referees? And he's like, yeah, no, that's good. Like they, they, that's the good. That's the right thing for them to do. It was just like, what? I <laughs> even if you think the refs fucked up, how is that okay to do? Yeah. Like, as I them? as much as I don't like the Cowboys, for a long time I've had a lot of respect for Dak Prescott. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, no, same. I always liked Dak. I thought he was an underdog story. Like I always thought that he was underrated by a lot of people, but like with how he performed, like. At this point, he's just got all the weapons in the world and put up 16. Like, eh. this, nah, man. This you, you got no one to blame but yourself. Great offensive line. Uh, yeah. Two, two really good weapons. wide receivers and a couple more that are pretty good. Uh, a couple of good tight ends. Z- fucking Zeke. Zeke Elliott. <laughs> a backup running back in Tony, yeah, Tony Pollard, Pollard. who's pretty good. You could start on some teams. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, you've got all the weapons in the world, man, and your offense struggled and kellen moore who's like considered a top end offensive coordinator like i don't know might get a head coaching coaching job next year somehow yeah we'll see this might hurt him but Mm. (laughs) this most recent performance but yeah like i don't know dak that that was some weak ass shit and yeah that's that's kind of the end of that there for me especially coming off of the uh the Bengals game the ref and that i was fully prepared to blame the refs i i came in at the tail of this game like this is the only play of this game that i saw but then, no, the replay of the ref sprinting down the field and pushing three offensive linemen out of the way so he can touch yeah. the ball, turn it from wafers into the body of Jesus Christ, I guess. That's how the football <laughs> rules work. <laughs> so then they can do He's, a play. And that, yeah. Yeah. He's supposed to spot it. The yeah. whole people saying the rule is the ref has to touch no, he doesn't it. The ref need has to, to spot he it. He doesn't need to like <laughs> rub his fucking fingers on it. He has yeah. to put the ball where the ball belongs. The The offense doesn't yeah. get to decide where they start. Exactly. The Niners would have won. Debo Samuel was marked shy by like an inch. Correctly. Mm-hmm. But like the Niners would have spotted it in front of the first down marker and said, yeah, we got that first down. Like if they're allowed to do that, the game would have ended anyway. Like no, 100%. Dak Prescott, when he gets up from his slide, needs to find that fucking umpire, give him the ball, 
part the Red Sea, let him spot it, everyone gets set, spike it. Like, that is your best chance. And even if he had done it perfectly, I don't know that they would have gotten it off in time. Like, it's... Yeah, it, it was, if he it was had gone down, like, five yards earlier, no problem. Maybe. No problem? I, don't I mean, know, like, man. it would have... You would have still had to fucking hurry, obviously, but... It's not against the rules for defenders to, like, slightly delay the game. That's what you're kind of trained yeah. to do and in football. Did you, did you see the 49ers guy? He helped Dak up and, like, patted him on the yeah. ass. Like, <laughs> like go, go, man, go. You gotta set the fucking yeah. ball. It's like, what no, are you doing? As, as defenders, you are supposed to lay on top of the offensive player until you're forced to roll off him, like, in that situation, basically. Like, that. that is just... The way they, the sport is played. And yeah, the Cowboys fans would have been freaking the fuck out if anyone would have done that. But 100%, if you're not going out of bounds, like the clock's running, man. That's your fault. Like 100%. And to me, the 25, uh, take, taking a shot from the 25 where you're going to have at least six defenders in the end zone. That's that's not that much better than yeah. just chucking it up from the forty, and you get two shots at doing that. I people kept saying no. that I don't know. Can you really get two sixty-yard passes in fourteen seconds? Forty. They were like they were on the forty. Were they on the forty? Yeah, they were on the forty, and he ran it to the twenty-seven, I'm, and then I'm pretty sure they were like the at the like midfield or slightly behind midfield. No, they were on the forty-yard line. Mm. Yeah. Okay. No, e- easily they could they could throw two passes. 100%. The first one would probably take 9 or 10 seconds, and then you got a whole... I mean, as long as you have more than one, they had 14, so eas- easily could have gotten that off. So, yeah, no. I don't know, man. Oh, well. Fuck you, Cowboys. Go home. <laughs> you don't deserve it. Yeah, they were at home. <laughs> well, I, they Almost 50% Niners fans in the crowd there. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if you saw oh, that. That was pretty fucking crazy, considering yeah, Cowboys. how fervent but, I mean, Niners Cowboys too. fans are. Niners dominated the Rams stadium too. Like uh, that one is a little bit more understandable. Regular season. I don't know, man. There's probably that more was, lifelong 49ers fans in California than yeah, than Rams definitely. fans, but we will see if we. I, I doubt that Lambo will have a significant chunk, but who knows. And last but not least, as we are 17 minutes into the introduction <laughs> section, I'm Lucas DeRider. We're doing it this way because it is the third week of january and there is not a lot going on gonna be a lot of ad living Mm. the good shit speaking of good shit we got some good shit to talk about in news of the week kirby the forgotten lands is out on march 25th nintendo gave kirby a gun Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Did he swallow a gun? Or how did he get the gun? Uh, he swallowed he swa- a man with a gun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I have the power of a man with a gun. I Exactly. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Is that actually, is that canon? I, yes. Uh, or is that a joke? No, like that's what he does. There's an enemy who has a gun. <laughs> Kirby eats him. And then he has a gun. That happens in that's... Smash Bros, though. There's like multiple characters with guns. And he swallows yeah. them. Kirby gets the gun. This is not the first time Kirby's had a gat. Like, no. It doesn't make sense, though, right? <laughs> is that just me? No. I mean, it doesn't make sense that he gets their clothes either. <laughs> like, I guess that's true. No, what are you talking you know, about? That's fair. <laughs> he, he eats them. Then, like, the parts that he doesn't want, he digests. And then the rest move through his, I assume, kickball like skin and manifest outside of oh. his body. You imagine Kirby to be like a kickball? Like rubber and textured. and <laughs> Yeah, with those weird little, like, I don't know what those are. Gro- not grooves. The opposite of grooves. Uh, ridges? Protrusions. Yeah, yeah ridges. Grinch, he's he's yeah. roughly. He's like a potato mm-hmm. chip. <laughs> <laughs> he's roughly. I get, now I get what you mean. It's like roughly. Is that a word? <laughs> Uh, roughly <laughs> i what 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 do you imagine the texture the consistency of kirby to be like play-doh i don't know oh, right? huh. like, i imagine uh, smooth like an orb. Yeah, malleable okay he does <laughs> he's just a, t- a big orby yeah he does <laughs> just, just gonna have ponder a... kirby <laughs> <laughs> he does have a little bit of a claymation thing going on now that you mention yeah. it huh that's why i pictured yeah. play-doh he's, he's kind of malleable he like kind of 
I don't know. Uh, he, he squashes yeah, and stretches, I, I feel like as they say he, in animation. If he jumps, I, I don't play Kirby games, but I imagine when he lands, he like compresses down a little bit and then expands yeah, uh-huh. back up. Exactly. He squash, squash and stretch. It's classic animation tenets. When he, when he, I know when he like jumps and smash, he kind of like bloop, 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 bloop as he like floats around. So yeah, gotta, he's gotta, he's gotta be a little, little clay boy. I know. Kinda. I know in the Detective Pikachu movie they made Jigglypuff furry. That's not Kirby. Uh, uh, Kirby smooth. No. no fucking way. I mean Jigglypuff I thought was smooth too. So right. I don't know. Yeah, I I never picked, we had this argument back when Detective Pikachu came out. I never thought uh, Jigglypuff was smooth. Mm. Okay. Fucking galaxy brain, Andrew over here. He's just like, nah, man. I knew that shit from day one. I know the texture of every Pokemon. I've never played Pokemon. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I know what they all feel like. I can identify any Pokemon by mouth feel. <laughs> oh no. Do you want Slow to know which ones taste the best? Yeah. Would you like to know which of them were cowards? Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to this game. I think it is going to be the perfect pivot after uh, after I play Elden Ring for likely the entire month leading up to Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. So, yeah, can't wait. Um, This next thing is going to be something that Andrew and I potentially argue about because we've argued about stuff surrounding this figure before. Troy Baker is getting into NFTs and it's going about as well as you would imagine. When have we ever argued about Troy Baker? Last of Us. The actor? Yeah. I don't think we've ever argued about his performance in The Last of Us. I mean, yeah, but he put out that whole, like... Oh, the man in the arena, critics are bullshit thing when people were raising like valid criticisms Truckman, of I the thought? game. No, that was Troy that was Troy Baker. Oh. He also he inserted you were, himself. You into were that. very excited that he's I don't know anything about Troy Baker as a person. You were very excited that he was gonna be in Death Stranding. Yeah, he's he was. good. He's a good performer. Shitty guy, apparently, but good performer. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean Once again though, like, are we are we doing the same thing now? Where <laughs> we're like NFTs equals literal shitty person <laughs> like i think we can all agree that it's it's a dumb thing yeah. it's stupid that he's doing this i don't think it makes him a bad person because nfts are v- i can kind of ubiquitous yeah i can kind of not like this dude and think he's a bit of an asshole for doing something like like same with russell wilson and his concussion water bullshit like that might have been a little bit more harmful i guess but like eh, yeah you're shilling a product that's probably bullshit like but, you know, I guess whatever you want to do to make a buck, whatever. I would have changed your mind at all if the company that he partnered with for this NFT is an AI-driven voice acting alternative that's goal is to mimic professional voice actors so that you don't actually have to pay them to get their voice in your games. Yeah, but, but that's also one of those just NFT brain things where they say that's what they're going to do. The... The voice actors will never allow that. Like, they they don't sign away the rights to their voice to be put in the public domain. It's like that uh, NFT group that bought uh, an NFT copy of, like, a script for an unmade Dune movie. And because mm-hmm. they bought a copy of the script, they thought it gave them the rights to Dune. Mm-hmm. Like, we will be making an animated series based off Dune and also putting it in the public domain and doing this other shit with Dune. It's like, you you don't own Dune. <laughs> it's, I haven't seen Cobra Kai, but there's a scene apparently where someone's like, uh, we're not going to be able to afford to put that song in the commercial. He's like, no, I got the cassette in the car. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, it's that exact ideology. <laughs> Did. No, I mean, look, I, I probably he also thinks of it as like a meme, like it's like a challenge, right? Like John Henry versus the steam engine. Like, it's like, haha, well, it'll never replace me. Like, that's the bit is that I'm taking money from this company that is trying to replace me because I'm that confident in my own abilities. Like, I, maybe, I, but, I, but 
I don't know. No, yeah, look, it doesn't, it's not a good look. No. I'm not going to pretend that, like, this is a good thing that he's doing. No. But, like, I don't know if this makes him a shitty person. <laughs> Maybe there's other sh- stuff that's come up from him, but, like. Well, it's it's all the stuff, just, honestly. It's all the stuff compounding over time that's like, ah, oh, fuck, this guy, maybe not great, actually. Like, very talented, very dedicated to his craft, obviously, but, mm, doesn't doesn't this, seem like somebody I would enjoy to be around. His personal life uh, section on Wikipedia is just one line, which is his marriage and his and his kid. Like, usually when that's the case, the person's at least publicly all right. Like, that's yeah. pretty rare. Oh, okay. You know, for someone of note to not have anything in the like. There aren't any weird ah, they, causes they've thrown their weight right, behind. Right, exactly. Yeah. They donated to a conservative action group in 20, 2006. They've since disavowed that, you know, some other random bullshit. No, he's okay. just a dude. I'm walking yeah, pro- probably, probably not fun to hang around with, but I don't know if the stance of the voluntary viewing podcast should be that he's a shitty person. Okay, I'm walking it back. <laughs> voluntary viewing does not believe that Troy Baker kind of sucks. I, Lucas DeRyder, kind of believe that Troy Baker sucks now. Not what you said, but oh, fair. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I kind of agree with you. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like he kind of yeah. sucks. Anyone that's shilling NFTs at this point probably kind of sucks. sucks. Did, you yeah. guys, uh, did you guys see the news bit going around that only like 400,000 people total have invested in NFTs so far? Yeah. That sounds about right, honestly. But like... It's it's a it's a fucking dot com bubble yeah. at this point. Like it's it's a joke how yeah. easy it is to manipulate the currency and then dump it and... You know, who who's taking the dive though? At a certain point, mm-hmm. like yeah, once you get burnt once by one of the pump and dumps, are you ever gonna invest in NFTs again? <laughs> like, yeah, fucked up. Oh well, fucked up. That's dominated so much of the conversation so far. But again, we've all been inside for coming on three years now, and we're going crazy. Um, two years. Two years. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> two? Oh my God. I got to dial not, it Not back. even two yet. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I need to re-examine some mental health stuff then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, we've been inside for five years. Like, I'm, everyone's depressed and fucked up. Lucas, it's only been a year and a half. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, because of the I... pandemic, I haven't gone outside yeah. in six years. <laughs> Uh-huh. Guys, I, I went ghoul mode too fast, too hard. I regret <laughs> this. I started giving myself passes what I thought was two years ago. <laughs> and I'm now learning that was approximately four months ago. Ooh. And I don't, I'm not comfortable with the things I've done, mm. <laughs> given that time frame. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, fuck. Bobby Kotick, who is totally yeah. competent... <laughs> and have things under control at Activision Blizzard, allegedly covered up the firings of dozens of employees because he didn't want the company to look even worse. Look, at a certain point, it's hard to make yourself look worse than you already do. <laughs> yeah, yeah can, we, can we talk about an actual shitty person <laughs> in Bobby Kotick? I, okay, really? yes, I will agree. Bobby Kotick's worse <laughs> person than Troy Baker, hands down. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hope so. This is one of those where every mm-hmm. time we talk about him, it's some other it's, worse yeah, shit. It's always, <laughs> it's always Bobby Kotick followed by, oh, this person is a fucking piece of shit because, and then this thing that really isn't that bad. And then you're like an equally yeah. bad person, Bobby Kotick, oh. who fucking... <laughs> Covered up dozens of sexual assaults and fired employees are trying to unionize and is a murder con- secretary. <laughs> yeah, All, yeah, just a a genuine psychopath, Bobby mm-hmm. Kotick. The representation of American CEOs, Bobby Kotick. I like, can, literally, I'm pretty sure he's Canadian. Am I mistaken? It's an American I'm company. American oh, okay, okay. companies. There's no yeah, difference. Sorry. Let's be fucking honest. Like, yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. the difference between Canada and America is maple syrup and fucking slightly better. The, the belief, yeah, the belief that they're better politically, but like they have the same political underbelly as the United yeah. States. Like, there's still yeah. tons of racism. It's just there's fewer people to be racist against anymore in Canada. Yeah, they've all been fucking murdered. Yeah, exactly. Or, 
completely folded into the culture via forced boarding schools. Like, yeah, no, they're they're fucked too. Have you guys ever heard of the R Canada, the the subreddit? No, it was taken over by neo Nazis. Oh my god, <laughs> shit. Yeah, basically there was there was like four mods of R Canada, and then one dude did like a fucking Hitler esque takeover of the of the mod team who was literally a neo-nazi and then started like bending the subreddit to his will by deleting anything that wasn't nazi content <laughs> and now our canada is like a whole, like awful cesspool a la like our the donald like that that then got banned and so everyone goes to i don't remember what it is now but they have like an alternate canada subreddit now because some fucking nazi dude staged like a fucking beer hall pooch against the mod team on our canada like yeah they're they're not better than us they mm-hmm. just are better publicly facing there's like, fewer of them like <laughs> there's definitely a lot fewer yeah i with with my profession being what it is i know exactly how that goes down and just how quickly everyone look man who, who, you're saying this to a guy out. who's seen this 11 times yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's a Spongebob reference. <laughs> Eleven times! <laughs> He'll be dead by sundown. <laughs> Our Canada will be <coughs> nuked out of orbit by sundown. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, but Bobby Kotick. I don't know. Go fuck yourself. Hey. Take your take your hundreds of millions of dollars and just fucking leave, man. Uh, You're I, done. I saw over the weekend that apparently he makes more in a day than what, like, medium-level employees at Activision Blizzard make in a year. Yeah, that's that's, that's the scale we're talking about when it comes to... The scale fucks people up. Yeah. yeah. Like, he makes... People, people hear $80 million, and they think, it's like the difference between $3 and $80. Like, $3 million, $80 million, man. It's just like, the scale is mm-hmm. exponential. Like, they... Yeah. If if you have one hundred dollars, then the difference between three dollars and eighty dollars is huge. Like <laughs> now, yeah, if you're talking in scale of millions of dollars and you have zero million dollars, <laughs> the yeah. difference between three million dollars and eighty million dollars is unfathomably huge. It's, like, it's hard to make people understand like what you can do with that kind of money when it comes to that scale, because it's like think about what you can do with a million dollars. You can do a lot with a million dollars. Yeah. You can make yourself pretty comfortable and yeah. do some cool things with a million dollars. Think about what you can do with $50 million. Yeah, exactly. You can do some serious damage with $50 million. <laughs> Are you kidding me? With $50 million, you can fuck around and your grandkids will probably never have to work again. Yeah. Like, you, you can do what you want in your life and still have generational wealth. Right. Like. The difference is unbelievable. It's yeah. literally unfathomable. Now talk about a billion dollars. My I mean, God. Yeah. Then you can't even comprehend the differences. It's called fuck you money because you can fuck around and you never have to find out. Yeah. Yeah. I So I recently looked at the question. Um, it, it's like the famous. I don't know if we've done it on the podcast. The If you could have dinner with one person oh. uh, from all throughout history, who would it be? And I have a strategy, and I'm not sure how ethical it is, but I think it, you guys probably know it. But it, it, I, it would probably be Elon Musk, yeah, and, you bring and a then gun. it would probably be and me. You bring a gun. No, no, I'm gonna fucking die a week later. It would probably be trying to bullshit, like meme, convince him to give me five million dollars as a meme because five million dollars is a joke to him. And there's, I'm looking yeah. at the billionaires where $5 million is literally a joke. Mm-hmm. And, like, Bezos wouldn't fucking do it. No. Bezos is a little bitch. Like, yeah. Bill Gates is too serious to, to do that. I think I could maybe convince Elon Musk to give me $5 million as a meme. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah. think that's that's possible. That's in the realm of possibility. You, you def- do dinner with Elon Musk. Beforehand, you put your life savings in some random penny stock. And then you <laughs> ask him to tweet about it. <laughs> and then the next day you sell yeah elon musk does seem like that arrested development brand of rich person where it's like it's a banana what could it cost thirty thousand dollars where it's right. like hey elon bet i can sink this crumpled up piece of paper into this trash can bet you five million dollars yeah 
That'd be like, it's, yeah. Like, yeah, but Elon Musk would hold you to that. Like, if you missed, he would expect the $5 million. Yeah. <laughs> He's that type of dude, too. I, so you better fucking make then it. Then you just email him some JPEG saying, yeah, these are NFTs valued at $5 million. He's not going to check. Yeah, no, it's literally not worth his time to check. <laughs> No, I don't know. Like, Bill Gates is that, by the way. Like, there's, yeah. I don't remember what interview it is, but they ask him when the last time he's been to a grocery store is. Right. And it's been decades. Mm-hmm. And then they ask him the price of common goods. And he's laughably over, like, the price. Like, they're like, this frozen lasagna meal. And he's like, $46. Oh, <laughs> just, oh fuck, oh Bill God. Gates. <laughs> and the point is supposed to be, like, Haha, ha. he doesn't even understand the concept of money for us That's normal That's so people. dangerous. But it's fucked. Yeah. It's fucked. Like, watching it play out is terrifying. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing, though. He's like, yeah, man, common goods are incredibly expensive. <laughs> I'm not going to pay my employees very yeah. much. <laughs> what, dinner? That's probably like $60 a serving yeah. from the grocery yeah, for, store. For the whole family? How much am I going to pay my employees bucks? per hour? Like 12 yeah, <laughs> the janitors at my office are literally making eleven dollars an hour, so uh, dinner is six hours of work. That man, that would be nice if billionaires out of being out of touch at least cut the other way too, where it's yeah. like you're paying these people way more than industry standard because you have no idea what money is anymore. But. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't no, at all. Because no. they don't make any of those decisions. No. People who actually do have a grasp on how little they can give people so that they'll still fucking work for them. Yeah. Keep them just on the brink. Don't pay them yeah. little enough where they will literally die or leave. Pay them just enough to keep them, like, hungry. Yeah. So they have it's to the keep Deadpool, coming back. Mm-hmm. The Deadpool torture device where you where he gets starved of oxygen right up to that point of death and then given just slightly enough to keep him alive. Like, that's, yeah, that's literally it. That's how you keep people docile. If you don't give them enough, they'll ride in the streets. If you give them too much, they'll actually have savings and be able to just say fuck you when things get bad. Like, can't have that. Ah, yeah. So, yeah, Elon Musk would be my answer because I think... As a meme, I can maybe yeah get get a joke five million dollars out of him and then be done, <laughs> and then go home and be done with it all. What would you so. have dinner with Elon Musk? I feel like that's as important a part of the question as like who would you have it with? Like, is this a nice night out? Is this a Buffalo in and out with Elon? Wings. No, yeah. Do you think Elon has got has a heart? Because I'd probably find some really shitty apartment (laughs) and pay someone for the night to use it and make, like, do my best with really cheap ingredients. Mm -hmm. And just be like, this is all I have, Mr. Elon. I'm like, hey, man, I'm just a huge fan of yours. One day I dream. No, I actually, no, I can't say that I dream of only a a Tesla because they'll just give me a Tesla instead. Yeah. Instead of the $5 million. Uh, Okay, that's true. So I can't say that. And just like, you know, like. I I dream of exploring the cosmos and man like the, the the everyday grind is just really getting me down like no cuz then he's 5 not 5 million dollars I feel like I could contribute and really help out humanity and cuz he's not going to give you 5 million dollars he's going to give you like an angel investor loan for 5 mm-hmm. million dollars I mean, I take that too right. like that that's a decent consolation prize I think I'd find something to do with an investment loan of five million dollars. I think you. I think the bet is to have him do it as like a joke or as part of a bet. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to. How little is five million dollars? Like that would be my maybe opening question. Right. Like how little is five million dollars to you? Like is it like one dollar to me? Because like I give away. $5 I'd give. I'd give you a dollar, Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. Would you give me the equivalent of one dollar? Elon, imagine actually how... that. Yeah, let's look. Let's do that math. One second. Elon, you get, yeah, imagine you how many retweets you would get if you just gave me five million dollars and then tweeted about it. Yeah, you tell him you can make a David Dobrik vlog or whatever. Yeah. Elon Musk yeah. gives me five million dollars. Whoa. Um. 
Okay, Musk is two hundred and seventy-seven billion now. Okay, which is just oh, too much. That's normal. <laughs> That's like double what we what used to be the richest person in the world like mm-hmm. five years ago. Um, uh, let's see. No fucking way. Okay, yeah, no, never mind. Uh, it's actually pretty close. One dollar for me is about three and a half million to Elon Musk. So, <laughs> yeah, two bucks. I I give two dollars all the time. Would you give me the equivalent of two dollars for you? Seven million dollars as a joke, like as a like, haha! Look how fucking rich I am. Look, man, if you want to humiliate me by giving me $5 million, I'll take it. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, I'll do anything for $5 million, man. Like, you you, you got me. You got me ready for whatever you want. This is fucked up, but I'll do it. Here's the thing. Elon Musk strikes me as the guy that would absolutely hunt people for sport, but then could be convinced out of doing it and be like, oh, shit, you don't want to be hunted for sport? I, I didn't really think about that. Yeah, I didn't I consider that way. your feelings in the matter. Okay, I guess I guess you can go. I think I think Elon Musk is more likely to give you five million dollars as a joke than he is to pay for that dinner. Hey, if you uh, if yeah, you gotta pay I for the dinner that. and he'll give you five million dollars, look, I can <laughs> buy him a nice dinner if he's gonna give me five million dollars. <laughs> Best fish tacos in the city of Los Angeles, Elon Musk, right here. Get at it. Right. One block away from my apartment. <laughs> it's very It's a hidden gem. It's just a fucking Taco John's. That's a taco truck, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's possible to give get Elon Musk to give you $5 million while you're just hanging out, standing around, eating your tacos while standing because fucking food trucks... Uh, what? I, how much money in cash do you think Elon Musk has on him at any given time? Unlimited. No, like oh, in I, cash I, I, on him. Yeah, on yeah. him. I don't think he carries I cash. Know. I'd be very surprised really? if he, he had does. physical dollar bills. Right. He probably has someone on his team near enough to him with cash in any given moment if he actually needs it. But yeah, I'm sure he's using like his phone most of the time. I imagine. Yeah, I whatever he's worked out is like the most secure solution. Yeah. I guess I thought I, you were just yeah. saying how much like liquid assets does he have, and the answer is unlimited right. because of the billionaire loophole where you can borrow money using your net worth in stocks as collateral mm-hmm. and just have unlimited money tax free. Yeah, <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> I guess no. I I was thinking how much cash does Elon Musk have on his person at any given time, but I kind of forgot that like once you get to like the level of. I'm a senator famous. Anything above that, you have like one or more people just around you at yeah. all times. Yeah. You have He's caretakers. always going to have a handler right. with access to something near him at all times. I wouldn't be shocked if like Elon Musk does not have a wallet or keys. He has a phone. That is the mm-hmm. only thing that he has on him. And the phone has the ability to unlock his house, mm-hmm. the ability to like pay things like i yeah he doesn't actually concern himself with anything else i think you still have some emeralds jostling around in there <laughs> for old time's sake oh yeah um just to keep himself humble do we want to do we want to drag dak prescott a little more or have we we're dragging a lot I, of people today i do have a tv story that i don't know it might not even be that interesting it might be a short topic but did you guys see the thing with brian cox and game of thrones no apparently brian cox was offered the role of robert baratheon oh in game of thrones yeah, and he said he wasn't gonna get and he paid turned enough. it down yeah because yeah, he wasn't gonna get paid enough like holy shit can can you like not that look i thought that what was it mark addy is yeah. that the guy's name who ended up playing him did a good job like that is robert baratheon to me now but that would be a very different direction brian cox and i'm not opposed to it because he's an incredible actor like yeah i that would be very interesting but i mean i don't know the robert baratheon performance we did see was just such a good like i don't know what i'm doing here i am the king Mm -hmm. but i kind of just want to suck blood and fuck forever yeah, I was right. going to say, like, 
former star quarterback of the high school football team now 40 years out from that and has just no fucking clue what they're doing <laughs> like that right. the epitome of that vibe he's the conqueror yeah mm-hmm. he's he's the revolutionary that then you have to rule you have to rule you yeah. know <laughs> yeah he's he was he was chosen because he had quote unquote the most direct line to the targaryens so like technically his claim was the most valid but like it's because he no, won at the, the end war. of the day like he swung a hammer real good like that's that's the real reason he was king like and that's not what qualifies someone for being a king is being able to fucking bash in Rhaegar Targaryen's chest plate with a 40 pound hammer <laughs> so the jewels sp- like scatter everywhere as his chest cavity caves in like nah that's not what makes you a good king and it's 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 pretty good and at the same time he was not a bad king like he wasn't no. cruel he wasn't like inherently he, unfair he didn't try he just... to be the ruler yeah. even though he didn't know how he said look man i cannot be bothered with this shit and that's fine because i don't know how to do it anyway i'm gonna get these other people that i know are really smart and would be good at this yeah. to do it for me i'm gonna delegate which is like a lot of being a leader is knowing how to delegate to the right people like listen man i'm gonna two things killing john snow's dad fucking whores you guys handle the rest i'm here yeah. to kill rhaegar targaryen <laughs> fuck whores and i'm all out of rhaegar targaryen <laughs> i'm here to cry over my best friend's sister being dead and <laughs> fuck whores and my best friend's sister died 40 years ago. <laughs> so, man. <laughs> I Ain't got nothing left in the tank. Wait, who was uh, Ned Stark's sister betrothed to? To him. To him. To oh, Baratheon. okay. No, he, was, he was in love with her. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, that's yeah, she right. did not like him. Okay. But, like, that's marriage. Yeah. Like, she was, in theory, just going to go along with it. They yeah, were going to be she unhappy. She fell in love with Rhaegar Targaryen and ran off with them and everyone's like oh shit she wouldn't have Rhaegar done that unless her. she was no, kidnapped I, I was so yeah. distracted by the fact that the show totally dropped the ball with Jon Snow being a Targaryen that I forgot that Jon the show also dropped the ball with Jon Snow being a Stark like yeah. that yes Jon Snow is a is a by blood Stark All right. yeah and I think he, he's he, he's 100% legitimate he, mm-hmm. is, he is the song of ice and fire yeah. The Starks are ice, Targaryens are fire. And yeah, his story ends with him just up in the woods. <laughs> a song of ice and fire. Oh, because Bran's story the... was such a better story. Yeah, it was oh. the best story, man. <laughs> that fucking line. Ugh. That fucking line. Ah. I I know the books are never going to get finished, but god damn it, dude. I have so much more faith in George R. R. Martin coming to that conclusion. And look, that's probably why the delays mm-hmm. are what they are at this point. Because now he's like, like, what the fuck is the point? Like He's written into a corner. Like He was struggling with how to properly weave all these stories into the conclusion properly. And then, yeah, now that everyone's seen the ending and like ripped on it, because, because it wasn't set up properly, right. I will maintain that the individual pieces of the ending could work if they're done properly but because danny went fucking mad in what appeared to be one episode (laughs) she went from competent leader to actual crazy person yeah because they sowed the seeds never really went into it and then just had her snap at the end and burn down the city right Fucking the show really had on its hands an interesting, but still, like, really great symbol of female empowerment, of, yeah, the woman leader doing well, and then was just like, nah, actually, bitches do be crazy, and fucking... <sighs> but that was the real ending of the story, right. is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And I think that could have been done well, like, but yeah, but that they didn't do been, it well. if you... If you if you want to really like get down to the nitty gritty to where yeah it's you're not giving the show the the story any benefit of the doubt even if George R. R. Martin did it well you could just say they had this symbol of female empowerment and then just said nah bitches be crazy <laughs> but like 
And I, Sansa Stark would have just replaced her as the actual, like, no, this is a queen. Mm-hmm. Like, this is someone who who is, like, and always has been the symbol of female empowerment and, like, the ability to bounce back from horrendous situations and without going crazy and murdering people and, yeah yeah and actually yeah like fucking deliver and leader people and all this stuff yeah that that would have been i guess the trade-off there and Arya also like would have killed the night king and it would have been set up in some way and not just she was there Ar- and then Arya kills him like, <laughs> like there, there would have been some plot line where Arya, like i bet you her her dire wolf could have come into play Arya's dire wolf that escaped you know like could have played a role with the night king like the the starks have always been in touch with nature and the night king's kind of connected to nature in a special way so could, that would have been written in as a chapter or something yeah please sir could i have a symbolism could i have a cinematic <laughs> parallel as a yeah. treat can i can i have just the smallest pittance of setup for Arya killing the night king Coherent character development. Never no, man, we, we we showed that scene where she was like d- doing the, doing those knife tricks. We set that up. Remember how they had Arya be like a completely soulless, like stone cold killer, all, almost on the same level of Bran as like not having any emotions, and then just they threw that out the window and had her be scared all the time. In the last, like, three episodes, and then, oh, I know this has been your storyline for the last seven seasons that you wanted to go kill the queen, and that revenge is your whole fucking thing, but revenge is bad. Look at me. (laughs) Okay, you're right. But I'm still gonna go fucking get my revenge and kill my brother. Makes sense. Remember how she- You're right. No, no. Let me go fuck Gendry. <laughs> Remember how she was going to kill the guy who killed her sword instructor? And like it was going to be this the whole setup thing of, huh, now she's just murdering people for her own personal beef. And this is getting a little morally dubious. Oh, wait, he's also a pedophile. Nah, she's still the <laughs> hero. Uh, <laughs> what the yeah. fuck are we doing? All that shit could have been done so much better. Yeah, the, her, her storyline was supposed to be... That, like, in order to become a faceless man, in order to become the assassin that she seeks to be, she has to, like, set aside all that personal beef and everything like that. And then the conflict is she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to lose her identity Mm -hmm. in this. She doesn't want to become a faceless man in reality. She just wants to kill people. And, yeah, that would have been set up much better than just, Nah! I'm abandoning you! Like, I'm, I'm gonna go back to westeros like <laughs> randomly on a whim because you don't like me anymore like yeah, uh, it, yeah. fucking god damn it dude watching breaking bad i'm now in the fifth season which is kind of a bit of a come down from the fourth season which is kind of peak breaking bad it's still so fucking good like i was expecting so much worse because i was like oh god it's gonna be like game of thrones where like it peaked and then you lose it Nah, nah, it's still like 8 out of 10 TV, and then I know the ending is really, really good, so Uh, Game of Thrones, you fucked it up. This podcast isn't going to fuck up as we move into the other call. Do we have any memes? The memes. Um, I mean, we talked about the, the Kramer, what's going on in there last week, um, and it's probably a little bit late. I should have talked about it last week, but didn't. Um, the shitting on Euphoria, the HBO show, talking about Euphoria High School. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. That just seems so funny to me. Um, it's like, you are a guidance counselor at the Euphoria High School. You you eat lunch in your car and have night terrors. <laughs> and what? Then, and then, like, a, a spread of, like, all the different characters from Euphoria. And it's like, which character from Euphoria are you? And it's like, you are none of them. You are Coconut Head from Ned's Declassified. <laughs> Deal with it. What is Euphoria about? I've only seen it really described. I've seen a lot of discussion about it, but never, like, really the central plot or what's it about. I've seen it described as, like, Degrassi for Gen Z. Yeah. But- I, I've never seen it, uh, but from... The people that have seen it that I've talked to 
My take on it is it just seems like a better version of Riverdale, but still Riverdale nonetheless. Okay. Like it's just high schoolers being wildly out of control and dramatic and just like serious dramatic shit going on, but they're all, you know, 16. Except for Zendaya, who's 25. And I mean, but the, I mean the characters. No, the characters. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure none of the actors are actually 16, but... Not anymore. The show had its first season. Right. It was a long time ago. Yeah, two right? or three it years, I think. Firmly pre-pandemic, yeah, like yeah. a year or two before pandemic even started. So, yeah, it's been a while. So, mm. yeah, Euphoria. People like it. Mm. So there's that. I guess Wordle is kind of a meme. Yeah. <laughs> Wordle. Have you, not you haven't heard Wordle? about this. Bro, I'm, I don't, I'm not on social media. Okay, so, so if, if you ever see, like, a series of yellow and green squares, that's... Sometimes gray and black. So, yep, sometimes. Um, that's a reference to Wordle. I've been playing Wordle every day for the last, like, three weeks. Um, what is this? Uh, what? How do you spell it? Word. L-E. Okay. Wordle. Mm-hmm. A daily word game. And the only way to play it is by Googling it. <laughs> and there's not an app. There's not, like, a... Yeah. What the fuck is so, it? So, every day, I'm... it's a different word. But it's the same word for everybody. And there is only one word per day. Mm-hmm. It's always five letters. And so you type in a five-letter word. And it tells you basically how many of those letters are included in the actual word and you have six tries. So if you get a yellow letter, it means that letter is in the word, but you have it in the wrong spot. If it's green, it means that's the right letter in that spot. And if it's grayed out, that letter is not in the word at all. Oh, there's like a, it's like a decoding mini mini game. Basically. There's, there's one almost exactly like this in some video game. It's a lot like Fallout. (laughs) Yeah, 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 the uh, hacking. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fallout hacking in like Fallout. 3. And I've seen. Oh no, they do that in four. Yeah, too, I've seen a lot of comments of that. Like, oh my god, years of playing modded Fallout has prepared me for this game. And it's on powerlanguage.co.uk. Yeah. Yes, this was made by a single guy. I think it was a pandemic project to mm-hmm. entertain his partner, and yep. it's just exploded. Mm-hmm. How does it make money? It doesn't. I don't think it does. He's made. They're saying donates windfall to charity. Huh? I don't know. Maybe he's making maybe money. There's off ads it. on it now. He made a statement a little bit ago about how like people have approached him trying to put ads on the website, and he says he mm-hmm. won't do it, and he won't put it on the app store. Now, obviously, that can change, and it almost certainly should have happened already. Like, I get the guy trying to say like it's supposed to be free and fun for everyone, but at a certain point, if you have the opportunity to take care of yourself by putting an ad banner on the bottom of your website, do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so there's a fake ad, or there's a there's an app on no, there's tons of iOS. Knock- there's tons of knockoffs. No, well, but there was one on iOS that was completely unrelated, um, that a guy just never intended on, uh, you know, being a huge thing, and he had like little ads on it or whatever, you know, that are on most random small apps, and made a ton of money from people downloading it. Because they thought it was the official Wordle game. And then, yeah, he donated all that money to charity. Because oh, he okay. just forgot that he ever made that app. And just made probably hundreds of thousands of dollars off of it or whatever in a day. So, he just donated that to charity, I guess. And, yeah, now there's probably a bunch of knockoffs. So, But, no, like, during... I'd say specifically between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Pacific time, I go on Twitter... That's every other post in my feed. Yeah. There's also like this little subculture of people on Twitter that are staying up to midnight so that they can get the new Wordle word and play Wordle. It's the same for everyone every day. Yes. And once, so and once you complete bit... that day's word, you can't play it anymore. Yeah. There... Is there like a streak or anything? Yeah. Like there... for doing it multiple days in a row, it'll tell yep. you? So it does it by your browser. So like if you do it on your phone one day and your laptop the next day, it's not going to communicate. But like when I go on and I finish the word or I click on the statistics tab, it'll show me your streak is 18. You've got a 100% completion percentage. 
Um, you're, you have 10 words that were completed on the fifth try. You've got four that were completed on the third try, that kind of thing. You ever guessed it right the first time? No. <laughs> I feel like that'd be almost no, impossible. I, like, has anyone? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it has. So, Without cheating? A part of the weird thing about the Wordle blowing up on Twitter is that I don't know if people are lying. I don't know if they're just posting like five consecutive green squares next to each other because there's right. no way to verify it. Yeah. Yeah. They could just read it on Twitter what the word yeah, is right. and then yeah. pretend that they guessed Wor- it. Wordle on three is a phrase that I've seen a lot. It's like the standard for being good at Wordle is being able to get it on the third try. Um mm-hmm. And I, I saw one guy do it organically in two tries. But that's just because his first guess was like one letter off. Damn. Yeah. Well, cool. I'll have to play it. Have you played it today? I did. Is it hard? I, stru- I almost didn't get today's word. I got it on the oh, sixth shit. try. But what uh... doesn't mean that other people struggled as much as I did. What what is your go to starting word? I usually start with a different word every day, but like really, yeah, okay. For a couple of days, I was using the same word. I was saying plays every single time, and then I'm like, I don't uh. know why I'm using that word. Yeah, Y is not, yeah, a, it's yeah. not a common letter. Yeah. So like today, my first word was irons. Um, well, I'm not gonna do irons. Yeah. Lucas, while you're talking about Demon Slayer, I'm going to try to get this wordle. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Moving into the breakouts. I read the entirety of the Demon Slayer manga, all 205 chapters, in the past week for my job. It's all right. That's a lot of chapters <laughs> in I one mean, week. Meh. <laughs> you, you get through them pretty fast. I uh, it. Uh, hmm. I guess my biggest reaction to it is that, boy, they really, really kept. They really gagged and infantilized and only had the female protagonist, the main female protagonist, have, like, 20 sentences in the entirety of these 205 chapters. Doesn't she have, like, a thing stuck in her mouth for almost the entire time so she can't talk? Yes. Which seems like a big red flag. Yes. It's not great. I... uh, So, the creator of the series, uh, whose name is escaping me at the moment, unfortunately, um... Very private about their gender identity and pronouns, uh, which has led a lot of people to believe that they are not uh, male, not male identifying. Still, still getting the sexism in there. So, mm. fuck. I mean, patriarchy runs deep. Maybe women, women can be sexist too. Like, yeah, trans people I, it, can still be homophobic. Uh, the I. I don't understand why this is one of the biggest anime on the planet right now. Like, I'll admit, the anime is gorgeous, and it's definitely a glow-up from the manga, but... Oh, man, there were maybe maybe two sections in all of this that I, like, genuinely enjoyed, but no, I don't get it. I'm trying to be more positive about stuff, about media this year, but... You say this every year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, and every year I fail because... Because of us. Yeah. Because we're here to fucking yeah. bring you down. Mm, bring in the hate out of me. Did you get the Always. wordle yet, Ryan? Uh, my first guess was raise, which was actually very good. Oh. Um, I is in the right place and E is in the right place. R and S are in the word. Mm. So I'm I'm doing pretty well right now. But I'm, a good I'm trying to get a good second guess because I want to wordle in three. Yeah. Apparently that's, a, that's what I'm going after mm. here. Well, while you're trying to get the wordle in three, Andrew, do you want to tell us about the book of Boba Fett and or The Witcher? Yeah. So I finished season two of The Witcher. I should have talked about it last week because Jade and I did finish it a while ago. Um, eh. Ooh. Eh. Oh, no. It was fine. It was not as good as the first season. A lot of 
pointless stuff was going on. A lot of a lot of stuff were like, okay, why did that matter? And then part of it's because I've played the third Witcher game, so there were a lot of characters that didn't really line up with their characterization in, in at least the game, which is supposedly supposed to be pretty true to the books. Um, the books take place before the the trilogy of video games. The, the mm-hmm. video games are kind of like the epilogue for the book series. Mm-hmm. Um, and the TV show is supposedly supposed to encompass the entirety of the books, like just okay. the books. They said they're not going to be getting into the video game stuff. They definitely are getting into some of the video game <laughs> stuff. And also, there are characters that are still alive in the in the third video game that died in this season, which is way before the video mm. game shit. And, and a lot of the characters are just, like, completely different, which is fine if they want to take it in, yeah. in a different direction, but, but they are, like, sticking to the main overall story beats apparently Mm -hmm. and then just kind of changing everything else i don't know if they're doing like a walking dead type of thing but i sounds like some tiny wimey mumbo jumbo is afoot um which i'm sorry can i circle back to demon slayer quickly and in an effort to be more positive say one of the things i genuinely liked about it just super quick yeah so demon slayer takes place in like the 1920s in japan which is pretty recent for like a historical period piece for like this kind of manga usually it's like way back in like feudal japan or something and like i thought to myself while reading this you know this is taking place in the same decade as the great gatsby like this is weird in different I place wonder, like yeah but like same century i wonder if that's ever gonna come up in a relevant way and just as i was thinking that one dude normally throughout the course of the series, like you kill demons by cutting off their head with a sword. Just as I had that thought, one dude just pulled out a gun and started shooting them. And I thought, this is pretty all right. I'm into this now. You got it? Uh, I think our man got Wordle in three. Four. Wordle in four. Not bad for your first I'm time. Sad. What was your third, third guess? My my second guess was Swire, which I didn't even know was a word. <laughs> But I wanted to make sure, I wanted, I was like, so the S and the R are out of place. I feel like the R is in between the I and the E, and the S leads the word off. So I wanted to make sure, and I got it right. Uh, then I was like, oh, it's Spire, like S-P-I-R-E, like on top of a yeah. tower. It was not Spire. Uh, it ended up being Shire from Lord of the Rings, or, you know, I'm sure it's I'm, also I'm sure a, it's a, a noun, countryside so. and stuff. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, that's annoying. I just watched Lord of the Rings, yeah. and I, I, I guessed Swire, which I I don't know what that word means, but I just wanted the placement right. I could have gotten Mortal in two pretty easily mm-hmm. if I would have just put more thought into yeah. it. My my last um, three tries were all just variations of that word with a, a different second letter. I think I, I did right. Spire. Apparently, Spire with a B is a word. And and I also guessed Swire. Uh, uh, you guessed Swire yeah. too, not knowing. It sounds like it should be a word, but I don't know that was a word. It's apparently in British English, which makes sense because this is .co.uk, yeah. a neck or depression between two hills, oh. which kind of sounds like a shire. Maybe I should get some credit for Wordle in two. <laughs> but yeah, my first Wordle, I, I had a legitimate shot at getting Wordle in two and... Fucking threw it all away, man. I'm, I'm trash. And Andrew is so upset yeah. at me for doing well that he bailed on the meeting. I was going to ask him if the book of Boba Fett is trash, but now I won't know. Yeah. Ryan, I know you are stepping back from social media a little bit. Have you heard anything about the show The Smiling Friends, or I think just Smiling Friends? I have not. So, like, you know how for a period when we were in high school, it was like, yeah, there's some funny stuff on YouTube. Yo, if you want to see some fucked up hilarious shit, though, you got to go to Newgrounds. Oh, God, Newgrounds. (laughs) Not really, no. I don't think Newgrounds quite swept my school the same way as others. That's fair. Yeah. Um, This Smiling Friends 
is a new grounds animated series that somehow made it onto Adult Swim. It is chaos. It is bizarre. I I enjoy it. I watched the entire first season, which is super easy because there are eight 11 minute episodes, so I could knock that out over a long dinner. Um it yeah, it's just chaos. I, I don't even know if I like it, but I appreciate that it exists. <sighs> Fuck. Yeah. I and like I'm ripping I'm ripping I'm ripping off an article from the hard drive, but like I legitimately think the entire first season of the show has been uploaded to YouTube in disconnected 30 second clips. And I almost enjoy watching it that way better. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Andrew, is Boba Fett trash? The No, okay, yeah, I know Boba Fett is trash, but is the book of Boba Fett trash? Um, trash is a strong word, but it is not good. Um, oh. It's fun to an extent, but, like, The Mandalorian was fun, and I would argue that The Mandalorian was actually pretty good. The book of Boba Fett is, like, fun. It is not good. Um... Uh, and it's made by the exact same people. I'm kind of confused as to, like, how they got here. And I'm not enough of a Star Wars nerd to say, like, oh, man, this doesn't match up with the characterization of Boba Fett. Because Boba Fett wasn't a fucking character. He doesn't even Yeah, he was just a yeah. dude in a cool-looking suit that people thought, that dude looks fucking dope. Yeah, um, I thought, and more was said about yeah, him being yeah, a badass exactly. than him actually being a badass. Well, well, actually, more said about him being a fuck up than anything else. But like, <laughs> I thought we all agreed that we got the Mandalorian as a show, as like the compromise of this is yeah, this is what Boba you think Fett Boba show. Fett is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and Boba Fett showing up in the Mandalorian, like they they did that pretty well. I did not for a second think he needed his own show. Mm-hmm. I thought it kind of wrapped up that story pretty good and like kind of placated the people that were like i want more boba fett but like this whole show is boba fett going back to tatooine back to like where jabba the hut was in power but now jabba's dead um he just fucking ices the guy that had taken over jabba's place he's like i'm in charge now he has no idea what he's doing like, they, they really do set him up as, like, he's the ultimate stone-cold badass, and he's smart as hell. And he he has no idea how being a crime lord works, and he shows it in every single move that he makes. And everyone's like, you are really bad at this. He's like, I'm doing it my way. And then every time something happens, he goes, why is this happening? I don't understand. And then... Like, all of his advisors that he has, his, like, close friends that are also characters in the show, they're like, hey, man, you should really do this. And then he's like, no. And then it doesn't work out for him. And then they're like, okay, what about now? He's like, no, I'm sticking to my guns. And then, like, immediately will betray himself and do the other smart thing. I don't, I don't know. It just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um I'm sorry, I, I just now remember that Boba Fett's return in The Mandalorian was the borderline Super Sentai fight, <laughs> yeah. where he takes out, like, three stormtroopers and then uses his rocket backpack to blow up the ship of the ones escaping. Yeah, I saw... I'm sad that couldn't be the entire Boba Fett show. Yeah, no, I saw some people compare that scene to just, like, the Power Rangers... <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it's it's not that far off. But the other part of Boba Fett, so half of the B- Boba Fett is him in this timeline uh, fucking up at being a crime lord and being really bad at it. Uh, the other part of it is because he's still fucked up from being in the Sarlacc pit, apparently. The mm-hmm. digestion juice or whatever was like really bad for him, so he needs to go into those healing pods like all the time and like when he does that he has flashbacks to the storyline post being in the sarlacc pit where he like fights his way out and claws out up into i'm guessing leading up into like the modern like what's happening in today's storyline and it is very insensitive (laughs) it is Mm. like they 
the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett really dive into like this is a Western, but like sci-fi, which works mm-hmm. a lot of the time. This is like, oh, he was left for dead in the in the desert, and the Tuscan Raiders found him that are clearly an allegory for the Native American people, like in the West. And he's like taken captive, but then he proves himself and he like becomes part of the tribe and he's the strongest of the tribe and now he's the leader and he he learns how to fight like the like the Tuscan Raiders and he goes on a fucking vision quest and brings back like some stick that he turns into a weapon and then they go blow up a train it's it is really like there's so many overused insensitive Native American tropes it's pretty bad aren't the Tuscan Raiders like three feet tall no they're human sized oh i'm thinking of jawa yeah no the jawas are also like bad they like oh when he's knocked out they like take all of his armor and they like beat the shit out of him when when you opened this story this description by saying that it's boba fett returning to tatooine i desperately hoped you were going to follow that up with to kill the sarlacc pit (laughs) did his revenge but no i it Oh, uh, it feels like the show was made by people who never saw the robot chicken sketches where it's Boba Fett just in the Sarlacc pit. Yeah. And like that to me is as big a part of Boba Fett's lore at this point than Boba Fett's actual appearances in the movies. Uh, it Yeah. He's a meme. Also, I, leaned into that. I never really watched Parks and Rec, but if either of you did, and uh, there's a scene where Patton Oswalt is is there, mm-hmm. and he's like in court, and he like gives his spiel for how he thinks Boba Fett should get out of the Sarlacc pit. Yeah, Patton Oswalt was a writer on that episode, <laughs> and it and it is shot for shot the same. Is yeah, it really? It is. Like the way that he That's describes it, and I I went back and I watched that scene of him describing. It's Boba Fett. He's in the Sarlacc pit. He crawls forward and he shoots his arm through and he's shooting a fire all and then and then it's the sands and a a hand shoots up from the sand and claws forward and like it's it's the exact same. He did that all uh, off yeah, the cuff. Yeah. Like that was a legitimate you can find the full like nine minute take of his filibuster. <laughs> it's fucking impressive, and Patton Oswalt is exhausted at the end of it like he's literally like holy shit (laughs) i think at like i they only needed like three minutes or whatever so that they could reasonably cut between them during the storyline and he just kind of kept going for his own like yeah whenever like he felt like he was done and he just kind of was like all right i'm done (laughs) and then it was like holy shit that was a lot and yeah you, you can find that on YouTube, I think. It's it's pretty golden. Uh, I did see that mashup, Andrew. Yes, uh, it, it is hilarious. Ryan, what are you checking out? I watched the first three episodes that dropped for Peacemaker. Oh, shit. The new Suicide Squad spinoff show. I don't know if you're ever looking to check it out, Lucas. Andrew's apparently not. Ooh. No, I, I said I it has not been on my radar at all, but if you guys say it's good and you think I'd like it, then I would try to bootleg it somewhere like <laughs> i mean what do, what do you think uh i have not checked it out uh should i ryan it's pretty good okay it definitely never it does not take itself seriously at all good. like in the slightest it is only played for comedy there's no real serious stuff in it so far at all mm-hmm. um i don't think it's as good as the movie I think John Cena's character was better in the movie yeah. for some reason. Like, I I don't know to what extent that James Gunn is involved in the show, but he at least directed and wrote the pilot. Okay, the first episode. Um, but and maybe like just smaller doses of Peacemaker was was better. Um, I'm in. I'm gonna keep watching. I I'm not like sold that this is like incredible and really good um i mean but yeah it's it's decent if you like the movie i think you'll at least appreciate the show um but yeah does the hook of peacemaker's character him being fully convinced that he's a superhero 
but is so obviously a supervillain to just everyone else. Does that still work? Like, is that... Yeah, okay. they, they do that a lot, for sure. They've already brought that up a million times. Um, and I, and they're setting up for, like, some sort of arc, for sure. Like, that he's, he's looking to improve himself and everything like that. And that, yeah, like, he was just so isolated. Like, his dad is a gargantuan piece of shit, mm-hmm. like... We, we heard in the movie, like, right. he has the exact same backstory. Uh, and yeah, his dad just basically tortured him so that he would become the greatest assassin in the world. Uh, his dad's also, like, hyper-conservative, yeah. like, watching the equivalent of Alex Jones and unbelievably racist and, like, yeah, unflinchingly politically incorrect. Um, so, yeah, like, when, when you picture him as, like, being raised completely in that environment and then, like not outside of that bubble ever he yeah could easily delude himself into thinking that he is yeah a superhero and doing the right thing and then yeah that now that he's outside of the bubble and he's working with other people you can see it starting to set up that like oh shit i don't want to be a bad person i never meant to be a bad person i just did it because i thought that i was a good person the whole time Uh thought that doing these things made me a good person and in the very first episode uh the, the janitor in the hospital that he's in at the end of the, the Suicide Squad basically says, like, but you you disproportionately kill minorities, like, for committing petty crime. Like, you know, he's like, he, he kills everyone who commits a crime. Yes. That's the thing. Like, he's a peacemaker. So any crime is death for him. He's like, you disproportionately kill minorities for crimes. He's like, well, I I kill people that commit crimes and, like, minorities statistically, like, commit more crimes. Like, repeating that talking point. And then the janitor is just like, well, yeah, but you need to, like, apply it equally. Like, you need to understand, like, some of these factors that go into play. And, you, like, maybe you need to, like, actually, like, patrol white neighborhoods more often and everything. And, and John, C- John Cena's <laughs> Peacemaker is literally like, huh. <laughs> like, he's like, interesting. Yeah, no, I'm, look, I'll do that in the future. I, I'm going to commit to that. I will try to be more equitable in my murders. Like, <laughs> just, like, literally... <laughs> I'm going to start trying to be more representative and stop killing minorities at a disproportionate rate. And like, you know, like very James Gunn, yeah. you know, like it's, it's the James Gunn take on that sort of thing. But like, yeah, it's, it's somewhat charming and like, yeah, I can see how this man would never once have thought to question the fact that, hmm, boy, I sure am killing a lot of black people. But like, cause you know, the bullshit Nazi mm-hmm. just looking at crime statistic thing, like. Yeah. And then his character, like, having been called out, doesn't kill the janitor because the janitor did not commit a crime, but does commit to murdering more people that commit very petty crimes that are not a minority. I want. So, yeah. I want a scene of Peacemaker, John Cena's Peacemaker, at the IRS just learning about how much tax. Yeah, financial crimes. Oh, fuck. This is bigger yeah. than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's it's worth watching. Mm-hmm. I, if you don't like the pilot, it's probably... You'll be fine without it in your life. But I think it's worth a shot. Awesome. Um, and then the last thing I'll bring up for the breakouts, uh, from my end at least, uh, nearly done with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I am at the gates of the Elite Four. Can't wait to be in all of them. Um... And then I was playing Persona 5 again, the spinoff. But then, I think it was last Wednesday, I played for about an hour. It was a pretty tough hour. Like, a a lot of difficult fights in there. And then I had one of those power surges that, like, it was only a second. My light only went out for a second. One of those blinking you miss it type things. But uh, that was long enough for my PlayStation 5 to turn off, and this game does not have autosave. Oh, I thought you were going to say your PlayStation 5 was fried. No, no, God, no. That, you guys would have heard about this immediately if that were the case. <laughs> I, my PlayStation 5 is fine. I'm still going to be able to play Elden Ring uh, next month, which I, I really need that fucking game to come out, guys. I'm, I'm on my end, like... I need huh. it! You know, that boss in... Uh, that, that fool's idol boss in Demon Souls, pretty great. Maybe you should boot that up and uh, fight them again. But, you know, I have Dark Souls for the Switch, and, like, I've not played the first Dark Souls game. Maybe maybe I should get into Dark Souls and, like, do the, and, like fucking 
Oh, God. Come on. Save me from myself, universe, please. I think we're going into the group chat then, but we kind of... We kind of did the sports group chat at the top of this. I don't know if there's anything else that uh, overlaps in the Venn diagram. Yeah. I mean, uh, Angel got her... Got, are we, we've got another PlayStation 5 controller so that Angel Aww. can play PlayStation 5 as well. She added all of you. Uh, Lucas, I don't think you added her back I yet. I have PlayStation 5 on recently. Okay, okay. Mm. I will do that. I'm it sorry. Was a, it was a mysterious... She wanted to cold add everyone as a close friend and see who accepted. No! <laughs> uh, Ian accepted almost immediately. <laughs> so if you ever want to catfish Ian, he is uh, remarkably... Uh, I mean, but it to... it says her name on it. Like when I booted it up, oh, does it, it said it like this friend? person. I didn't recognize the handle. I'm like, oh, who is that? And I clicked on it and it said it's Angel. Oh, okay, it. except that's fair then. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, we've been playing some Rocket League together. Oh. Been playing Overcooked with two controllers, which is a lot better than sharing a controller. I'd imagine. Um, and then yeah, played play a little bit of Madden together too. <laughs> she she may be participating in our franchise that we've got running oh, here I, in the future I, I, I will let her know when i see her that she can also borrow elden ring from me as soon as i finish it <laughs> uh still still in the phase where she's looking down at the controllers sometimes for the right button so i don't know that elden ring will be a great starter game for her i uh, i i i have to I've had to be really careful with like playing games with partners who don't have as good. Okay. So calling it video game literacy makes me look better. Like who are when it actually is like who aren't as ingrained in fucking gamer shit as what I am. And like bite my tongue at like, so you're just skipping some coins in the uh, super Mario odyssey. You shouldn't, you should get. You should go back and get those. Like, why? <laughs> why are you not playing this exactly how I would play it? And uh, yeah, yeah that... I have completely divorced myself from any expectations in the slightest. Like, <laughs> when we play Rocket League, it's just like, yeah, I'm playing one on two, and like every once in a while, she'll chime in with a hit here or there. Like, you know, right. just kind of. That's that's the way you gotta play. Mm -hmm. You know, don't. I, I have zero expectations when when yeah when you haven't been literally playing these video games in more or less the same format since you know we were what five or yeah. six like yeah i mean it's just not it's it's an unfair expectation it's, it's like so. muscle memory and just like parts of your brain that develop that we might be too old to learn this shit now like i i only started playing games on my pc like three or four years ago and i am not good like I'm, yeah. I'm bad. The aiming with the mouse is hard, and I am looking down at the keyboard a lot. Yeah, it's just my brain didn't learn how to do it at a young enough age. It's hard to learn it when we're this old. Yeah. So yeah, I I think that it'll be good. It'll be fun. But you know, at the same time, we're our our brains. Like the thing that I always notice is um. In, for, in any game that requires the right stick to move the camera, mm -hmm. that's the one that people struggle with yeah. who didn't play video mm -hmm. games for the longest time. Like, it is very difficult to move your character and move the camera at the same time. Uh, and for us, it's literally muscle memory. Like, it is... We don't even have to think. Like, mm -hmm. that is just how you control your character. It's very, very simple because we've been doing it for decades mm -hmm. at this point. Which makes sense because so. every other on-screen media is... No, that's fixed or that's moved artistically you don't you don't think of it as being a thing that can control that's that's set that's there right yeah but then it's like the most crucial mm -hmm. part of any game where you have to shoot things <laughs> is being able to control the camera mm. so yeah i did see her his and hers uh playstation 5 controller instagram post and i like that mm -hmm. so i feel like i get some credit you were in on it. Yeah. Yeah, they have cool red ones now. Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. I was just like, you get whatever color you want. And she was like, red. And I'm like, that's a good color. Yeah. That's a game. <laughs> no, color. you're a girl. You're supposed to have pink. Girls have pink. Girls like pink Boys shit. Boys have every other color. <laughs> it's not even her. Like, we're, we're, we split it. 
and I think her half was my like Valentine's Day gift. I don't know. It's a whole yeah. So yeah, like in terms of ownership, it is mine. <laughs> But it is the one that she uses and is tied to her profile, which is a cool thing about PlayStation, by the way, is when you like sign in with a second controller, it has you like associate it with a profile. Oh, really? Um, cool. Or you could just be a guest, yeah. you know, like blah, 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 guest too. But yeah, you can have the controller be like associated with someone else's profile. Is, so, yeah. Is Bug Snacks free yet? I feel like Bug Snacks would be a good couples game. Is Couch Co op Bug Snacks? No. It's not co op. Oh, it's not co op. Also, Bug Snacks was free for like that month, like, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't mm. think it. I think I, I think I bought it or whatever, like oh. added it to my okay. library just in case. Yeah. But I don't remember. That'd be a good one to mess yeah. around in. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing Red Dead Redemption too. That's fair. That's, that's our, a good one to mess around. That's our. As well. Yeah, that's our non-couch co-op game where we're just hanging out and doing shit about to go get the white arabian from uh, the from the lake up north i never did it it's a good one no never no, i had the yeah. same horse the whole game which one the i mean well so you get the horse that you're on at the beginning of the game and then yeah, tennessee yeah, Walker. and then they say you know go get another horse at the stable mm-hmm. in town in valentine and it's it's that one there's like a the shittiest horse well there's in the game. there's three horses there and you bought the cheap no, one. No, I bought the fast one. There, oh. There's one. Oh, you had enough money at that point yeah, to get the I fast one? Yeah, I a lot of bodies. Oh. Um, but so, like, at that point, I bought the... Uh, there was, like, an... I forget what the descriptions were. I was like, this one's old. This one is untamed and unathletic. And this one is a retired racehorse. And I bought the racehorse. Oh. And that was Carl. And he Fair. stuck with me to the very end of the game. And then he died. Yeah. No, mine was, I did the same thing, uh, except for I bought the really cheap one. And then the minute that uh, I killed the bear, which we didn't do in this one because we got murdered by the bear. And then the bear disappears and you have to reset it in order to find it again. Um, And then I just immediately rode up straight to the lake, got my white Arabian. uh, And then Ghost was my horse for the entire entire game until Ghost died. Mm. And now I want to resurrect Ghost. Because I'm scarred emotionally. You can do that in Breath of the Wild. I don't know about Red Dead Redemption 2, but you can do that in Breath of the Wild. There's Horse Reviver in Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, I mean, it, once they're, once they're dead, the you can't game. revive them. It, Horse Reviver is like, they're wounded and on the ground, and you use Horse Reviver to get them back up. Once that right, yeah. meter well, goes like down and they're dead, they're fucking dead. Well, it's like that state before they're yeah. dead. They're given like one HP or whatever, and if they take another hit, then yeah, they. Or die if you wait too long, if you wait like them. five minutes, uh, they're like sure. Downed, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. They're making they're making death death saving throws. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We should play some D anD D. Hell yeah! I'd be down. Do it. Mm. Yeah. How are we going to get a dungeon master? <laughs> you know, if we if we get a legitimate dungeon master to come on the podcast and we do D&D on the podcast, I think that would be dope as hell. But none of us are equipped him, to be a dungeon master. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it would take a lot of research and stuff like that. But at the same time, I'm sure it's doable. I think it'd be more fun if the three of us got to be an adventuring party Yeah, with, with a dungeon master. I know one guy who says he has done dungeon mastering before. So, like, it yeah. could be him. He'd do it for free. <laughs> I mean... I feel like Dungeon Masters don't... It, it's almost a chore yeah. for most people. Like, it's... it's You you agree to be the Dungeon Master on the, like, kind of promise that eventually someone else will be the Dungeon Master on the next yeah. adventure. Like, mm-hmm. Reciprocation. Because it's not... Yeah, it's not fun. It's more work. Like, you're, you're, you're putting in a lot of effort in order to make it fun for everyone else. So... I mean... I don't know. I can I can maybe write some short stories and that'd be that'd be fun. Well, dungeon masters don't. There's modules for D and D. You don't. Oh, I can write. Yeah, I guess outlines. you could. You don't have to yeah, write that. Okay, much. here's the That's thing. The hardest you, work. You don't have experience with dungeon. I mean, I know you have like a little bit more than we do, but like you have to understand the game extremely mm. well in order to actually tell a coherent story with your like outline that you're doing and 
On top of that, I think it'd be more fun if the three of us were the party and there was someone else doing the dungeon master, but... Because if you're the dungeon master, is it just me and Ryan as the as the party? That's doable, That's not, yeah. It just People seems do small. that all the time. No. It's not that small. Dungeon master for hire. How to hire a dungeon master. Oh, DM for hire. Here you go. How much does it cost? Probably a lot. <laughs> oh, f well, it probably depends on the quality. There's There's got to be somebody starting out on Fiverr trying to do this. Four to six players for four hours, $25 per player. That's nothing. Why can't they do three? Is it 20? Wouldn't that be cheaper? For, okay, so for four to six hours. I'm like, per hour, per player, per hour, but it's... No, four, four hours. A four-hour session is $25 okay. a player. They say four to six players, but I feel like... Couldn't you just have three? That'd be easier in theory. There might, there might be um, a lot of storylines where you need a minimum of four. I don't know. They could add an NPC or something like that too, then. Um, and then each additional hour, ten dollars per player. I don't know. It's not insane. Practically making money. <laughs> Definitely not making money. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. Compared to what you go into the arcade, twenty bucks for what, like one hour of entertainment? Yeah, that's fair. So. I. There you go. I don't know. I worry that when you find a dungeon master, a dungeon master who is our specific kind of brain poisoned because I, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. They, I'm going to name my, ta my character testicles. And if they're not okay with that, I don't think I'm going to be okay with this campaign. Yeah. High charisma characters are fun because they sometimes just completely break the game. So yeah. Hmm. All right, I think that is just about going to do it for episode 170 of the Volunteer Reviewing Podcast. I have no idea what this is going to be titled. I imagine we will figure that out in the after pod. If you like what you heard, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Check us out on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for highlight clips. Add the link in the description to help a collection of great progressive causes. Um, what else do I usually say? Support us through Patreon or the Anchor Podcast platform. If you are on Patreon, though, you'll join the likes of the terrific Tiffany Cole, Sucky Badger, and Sensual Richard Nixon. Follow us on Twitter for updates. Follow me, at LucasTheWriter, on Twitter to keep up with all of my writing. Part of my New Year's resolution, I'm blogging again. Put out 4,000 words on some of my favorite pieces of media from 2021. Hope they're your favorite, too. Hope this podcast is your favorite. Hope this episode was your favorite. And hope you'll tune in for the next one. Goodbye. And good luck. Happy MLK Day. I'm talking too long now. Bye. Bye.